Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're gonna go through what I have in my carving kit for carving wood and various things. So stay tuned, see what's inside. Okay, so this is my carving kit. It's kind of the main group of tools that I have. I have other tools that I use for carving, but this is kind of like my main little pouch. I keep a lot of the like, um, my go-to tools in here. So um, if I'm out like camping or something, or if I take a trip and I want to, I know I'm just gonna be sitting around a fire or something at night and I want to do some whittling or something cause I can't sit still for too long. Um, I'll take this with me, pull it out, and it could do a majority of what I need to do. Um, I still usually, if I'm camping, have an axe with me or something. That's probably my main other um, tools that I'll bring is either like a handsaw, which is always in my truck, um, to like process some wood down into smaller uh, pieces if I'm carving it, and then maybe an axe to do some like big stuff. Let's get into this, but before I'll show you some examples of what you can do with this. Um, I'm still fairly new at it. It's, it's a hobby I picked up a couple of years ago. So um, there are much better resources if you're learning, you wanna learn how to do it out there, like uh, Dunk, Doug uh, Linker. Check out his channel if you haven't, um, it, if you don't know about him yet, check him out. He's super cool if you're into this type of stuff. So things that I have outside of that kit would be things like this. Um, I would carry either a larger type of an ax, um, definitely not a giant ax where you're like gonna be processing whole trees, but this is what's called like Husqvarna's um, carpenter ax. Uh, it's probably uh, maybe, eh, maybe two feet long or so. Um, I, this was my main go-to ax for a long time. Um, to just kind of process it down. It's a little bit bigger than a hatchet, I would say. Maybe borderline hatchet, um, but it's just a small camp axe. And then this one we saw in previous video. <clears throat> I recently just purchased this one. Um, I'm loving this so far. Um, I used this in the coffee scoop video to kind of process that wood down and, and get it into more ready to able to be carved kind of state. So this is usually like a preliminary tool. Um, you're using this for like rough out, things like that. So another tool I'll use, um, not as much with, with carving a lot, but um, if I'm in like an initial stage, uh, it's like real big firewood or something that I want to split down into something smaller, I'll use this. So I'm gonna use it on the uh, uh, charcuterie board video where we, uh, it's basically used to come down on top of the log with like a hard mallet or something or a piece of wood and it, you can able to be like use some leverage and split that log down make smaller wood so it's just another tool for processing like i said i normally don't bring this a whole lot with with like carving and stuff but if you're starting with larger wood you might want to invest in one of these they're not that expensive um you can get them on amazon pretty cheap this i don't remember how much this was but yeah, you can get them on Amazon pretty cheap. Um, or if you're fairly good at welding, it's literally just a round piece of piece of round pipe with a long piece of bar stock on it, which is a blade. And then this handle just, you know, this one's wedged in pretty good, but they're usually, will just slide in and out for takedown. So with my carvings, most of them, when I finish a carving, I, I give it away to someone, um, a coffee scoop, uh, bowls, candles, things like that, spoons. I will usually give away at Christmas to people or something or out, or in a case of like these little like um, wood spirit gnome type things, I carve them and tend to leave them on trails when I go hiking just for, you know, other p people that come by, if they want to take it home, they can, or, you know, if kids are out hiking or something and they see it, it's kind of a cool thing. So I don't have a whole lot of examples. I have done a lot more than this. Um, these are the ones that I've carved and uh, just haven't done anything with yet or haven't given them away or, or I just, they're not in states of completion. So um, if you're thinking about getting into carving, uh, I taught this to uh, my Cub Scouts, uh, so the kids I teach in Scouts, how to get into like using a pocket knife for carving and things. 
Um, if you're not confident, if you're not feeling good about your skills, practice on a bar of soap. So this is um, a client of mine, she, she makes soaps, but I had her give me a bunch of just unscented soap. Um, you want something that is a little more firm, which is why I had her uh, make it. So you can use things in, in the store like, like Dove or, you know, uh, Irish Spring or something. Um, but I would suggest pulling them out of their box they come in and letting them sit out in the open air to kind of dry out for a week or two before you get into it. Cause it can almost be too soft and the last thing I would want is for you to come in with a knife and you like go through it and in, in into your finger. So just let them kind of firm up or find kind of these artisanal type soaps and stuff, um, you know, your local farmer's market or something that just has a little more density to it. You know, it's, it's gonna last a lot longer, but these, these are good for intro to carving. Um, so the things that I made, like a little example is I made this little bear. So we're Cub Scouts, so I made a little cub that's a scout. He's got his little neckerchief and his little shirt. I don't know how much detail you can see there. His little arms with the with his you know shirt sleeves and stuff and his feet, and then you know, just kind of his head and his ears, his little mouth and stuff. So um, and then the back he's got his little tail and his uh neckerchief thing that the scouts wear. So this was like one of our projects. So I use this as an example to, to teach them how to process wood. If you're using uh, like soap and stuff, I tend to save the shavings. Um, so this has a screw in it, but I'll, sa I'll save the shavings and these are really great for taking camping and stuff like some bigger chunks like that. Throw them in a Ziploc and these are great for like washing up or washing your hands and stuff. Um, afterwards, just a little bit of shavings in there, rub your hands together and you've got, you know, you don't have to worry about carrying around a huge bar of soap that you're constantly putting back and just take something like this, pop a shaving out, wash your hands and, and you're good to go. So more kind of just finished, you know, I got into a stage where I was making a lot of like old looking men. Um, this is nibbles apparently. And I made him in March of 2020. This was, oh, number two. So this was actually my second carving that I ever made. So um, obviously wasn't very good at hands yet. So I just had him like his hands in his pockets um, and I gave it like this antique wax to make it kind of look older and dirty. Um, so that doesn't, doesn't actually get that dirty. I've just made him look kind of antiqued or I was experimenting with how to use like an antique wax here. Uh, this is just another Another example, just a piece, this is number four. Obviously I made this in May of 2020, so I don't know what the in-between was, but just another example, just kind of like a hillbilly looking dude with his hat and, you know, different stuff. Um, this was, I think I was camping. Uh, like I said, I, I like to do it when I'm out camping and stuff, I'll just sit around the fire and carve. I think I was, I found like a piece of driftwood on a beach um, and just kind of carved this old man into it. It's not very good, but it was something to kind of mess around with while I was sitting, you know, trying to work on like thinner stock. It's a little easier to do when you have bigger stock, but this thin stuff I was just kind of experimenting with and seeing what I could make. Uh, more advanced stuff that I've done lately. This was probably last year I made this spoon. I've done some really nicer spoons. I don't know if I have pictures of it anywhere, but I'll see if I can find any. Um, but I've given those away at this point. So you can get these kits on Amazon if you want to or at your store, uh, just kind of basswood carving kits. They come with like various different blocks of wood, different sizes. Um, I saved some of them here in just this like plastic bag, but he like said they come with, with all different sizes and shapes and stuff. This is kind of how that guy started off at, you know, so. That is uh, kind of just some examples. You've seen this in other videos, I'm sure, but this is my carving kit. Um, it is made by, the pouch itself is made from by Kanai Pro Gear, which I'm really bummed out. I think they're out of business now, um, which sucks because all my backpacks and coats and things I use for hiking and that are from them. And uh, that really stinks. So, and the inside, 
You guys have seen some of these before, but on the inside, I've got this more, uh, um, it's kind of like a clogger's knife. Um, so you see like, um, what's a Swedish, I think, make those like wooden clogs. I think it's Swedish, is it Swedish? Sweden? I don't know, the people that make the wooden shoes. Um, they have a much bigger version of this knife, but it's basically got a hook on the end. You hook around to a fixed block of wood um, and you can use it as like a levering action. And it's kind of, it's a lot, I don't want to say softer on the wood, but it's less of a shock. So you, you tend to get less cracks and things when you're like, instead of like an ax blow. So this is pretty cool for taking off big chunks of wood. Um, over here are my main kind of carving knives. Um, these are more like detail knives to get like smaller details on carvings and things. This is kind of my, uh, my go-to kind of workhorse knife. Um, it's a Mora knife, I don't remember the number. They're all like, they have numbers and things, but uh, it's a Scandinavian grind, so it's basically ground on both sides. Um, and you can do, get some real fine detail with the tip and get real fine detail work, or you can kind of come further down and get some larger chunks off. It's really cool for making carvings and stuff. It's the main knife, and just some paint brushes and stuff. Underneath is a pack of sandpaper and just things to smooth things out. Uh, paint brushes and stuff in there. And then these are kind of like my, I covet these knives. They mean a lot to me. Um, just a little cheap wood handle blades, but there's I've all different kinds of these, like there's, you know, grooves and blades and there's a flat edge kind of chisel end. There's curves and V tools and things to really get fine detail and carving and stuff. So I use those in the end to really finish stuff off. Uh, then underneath, this is like a leather strop for those, those tools I was just showing you, those small knives, um, different kind of sh uh, shapes in here and stuff. This is just a piece of like, like a felt and this is like leather. I'll take this uh, like rubbing compound, which is like, I don't know, 15,000 grit or something um, kind of compound. And you just rub it on that leather and then you can just rub the blades on and that keeps it super sharp. Um, more of this, this is a spoke shave. So it's basically like a hand plane. I think if you've seen this in other videos that I posted, but the blade kind of protrudes out a little bit and you can kind of drag it across material to kind of start shaping things. This is a spoon gouge. So it's like a hook knife, kind of. Um, the blade is actually right here. This side is this doesn't have a blade. And you can use this to kind of like dig out bowls and spoons and things like that. Um, but that's more of like a finish tool. Um, so when you get the first kind of rough out, you use something like this, which is a, a gouge. So it's basically a big chisel, but it's kind of curved on one end. This is the blade side here. Um, and this is for like, like digging in and kind of curving up. So you got the edge of your bowl, something like that. You can kind of dig in and kind of curve up a little bit. Um, and then this is just another one, just a little bit different. So you can see the, the size of the radius is a lot tighter or on this one. And this is a bigger radius, so it's a lot broader. This will take out a lot more material quickly. Um, and then this is just a piece of leather um, glued to a piece of wood, uh, just a leather strop that um, I could put more of this kind of compound on and, and strop these knives to keep them super sharp. Um, this is a card scraper. So I'll use this uh, to kind of finish out smooth rough spots or a little, little indentations and things. This will smooth it out and there's all different kinds of radiuses on this one. I like this so I can get it inside of like, you know, spoons and stuff and kind of scrape that and make it a lot smoother. And just a little bit of that friction, you can already see, you know, the sh small minute shavings, but it smooths it out big time. So that's that and some protective gloves. If I'm feeling like I'm going to cut my finger off that day or something. And then this is just like a little, um, uh, like pocket knife type thing with different types of blades in it. Um, not the safest, uh, to use, but, um, it's pretty cool. So like you can, 
you know, use it like that to like, you know, dig out small little indentations and things. Um, it's kind of handy to have if you want to just take this out in, you know, and you're sitting around a fire and you don't want this huge kit. This is super cool to have. Um, I do keep them all sharp and stuff, but the reason that it does scare me a little bit is there's not really a lock on any of these blades. So um, they're, I'm always coming towards me, but you just have to be careful, you know, which way you're, which way you're going. But, you know, obviously like that, that's ash and that's, that's pretty sharp. So it's cool to have, you know, just little short blades and stuff. This is pretty handy. So thanks mom. I do like it. I found out my mom starts watching my videos now. So hi mom. Okay, so in addition to the kit and the knives and the saws and stuff, these are some kind of um, other tools that I'll use from time to time for carving. Um, I, I'm trying to get more into using these, but I just don't have room in my kit to carry them. So I tend to forget about them a lot. So I do need a bigger kit. But these are just little, um, let's see, pretty cheap box but just little um other carving tools so they're kind of like those um the smaller ones that I, sh I showed in there but just various different like chisel type knives um there's another example of like a gouge like a scoop um this is just kind of a smaller version of it if you wanted to kind of dig in there and get a little more detail uh the main two or actually three here that uh, i would use the most are these kind of like smaller little round gouges um this one is is kind of a smaller little round one also get a little bit of detail work uh, and this is like a v-tool so the only thing i think why i don't like using these is the blades were almost a little bit too thick for my liking um, so i need to eventually sharpen these and, and get a much better edge on these to start using them more i think um, because they came kind of dull and, and not the best so these are reindeer, <laughs> probably stand for reindeer, I'm assuming. Um, probably another Amazon buy something fairly cheap. Like I said, um, in the leather video, I tend to buy like cheaper tools to start and then I'll eventually I'll start replacing them with more expensive tools. Um, so this is another example of these type of knives. They give you band-aids, which is cool. I love Beavercraft. So these are a little bit, more of a step up than stuff like this um same same concept as before it's that scoop style knife but these handles are made to kind of fit in the palm of your hand and and do some of that real good you know like digging and carving and stuff it's just a different way of holding the tool um that's a little bit more comfortable so this might be ideal for you to kind of really really get in there and and dig at stuff um so that comes with that kind of gouge it has kind of a, a shallow um, one. These come pretty sharp. Beavercraft never really disappoints. Those are the ones that made my carving hatchet as well. Um, this is like a small V-tool. Another round kind of gouge. Uh, this is like a flat chisel type thing. This is a little bit crooked, but maybe that's by design. I don't know, but um, just a, kind of a more of a chisel type of a knife. I don't use these very often. I'm sure there's a good use for them though. And then another uh, just larger kind of round gouge. I need to start using these more too. Again, um, it's an issue where I don't have anywhere to put them. So I don't remember to use them. I need to get all of these tools out of these boxes and somewhere on display where I can see them and, and want to reach for them more. Uh, these Beavercraft tools uh, are not super expensive. They're definitely not the cheapest things you'll find, um, but you can find them on Amazon fairly, fairly cheap. Um, you know, some of the stuff's a little better, but everything that I've gotten from them so far, including that stuff and the hatchet, and I've got some other knives, um, some of those knives, the smaller ones in, in my carving pouch are Beavercraft. Everything I've gotten from them so far is amazing quality, super good. It comes from right out of the box, just razor sharp usually. 
Um, so if you are thinking about getting into carving, um, I would almost, in, if you can, invest in Beavercraft tools. Um, the Mora knives are great too. Um, they're fairly cheap to get into, um, but if you want those specific gouges and things like that, um, I would highly suggest Beavercraft to start. Um, the cheaper things, they're okay, but they're almost so cheap. Like you can get kits on Amazon for like 12 bucks, you know, but you're not gonna like them. Um, and you'll notice like the quality and stuff of them is horrible unless you're really comfortable sharpening and honing them. And even then the steel they use usually is really cheap. So it doesn't hold an edge and stuff. So honestly, Beavercraft is your best bang for your buck starting out. Um, I'm sure they have some nice, nicer things too, but I don't know that I would ever upgrade from that, from these. Um, it's turning into a Beavercraft commercial and it wasn't intended to be, but um, it is really good stuff. I would highly recommend it. But that's all for today. Uh, I appreciate you watching this video. If you're still here, I would love if you would uh, subscribe if you haven't, give me a thumbs up, comment, um, all that stuff, it really does help and I appreciate every single one. I'll see you in the next one.